Gaijin Entertainment presents The Shooting Range You are watching The Shooting Range, a weekly show for all tankers, airmen, and aspiring captains in War Thunder. In this episode, Making Money, How to Get Enough Silver to Live Through the War, Defying Gravity, G-Forces, and Ways to Counteract Them. Hotline. The developers answer questions that you left in the comments. But first, let's start with spotting enemies. What are the easiest ways to help your teammates? Even though a large portion of our player base prefers to play solo, teamwork, and even more importantly, proper communication, win battles. Today, we'll tell you how you can help your teammates and increase the chances of winning by spotting enemies for your team. We'll start with planes. Let's say you're playing RB. There's only one opponent left, but he has climbed really high and hidden himself in the clouds. Now you have to find him, and it's a real chore. Sounds familiar, right? The best course of action in this situation is to scour the edges of the map, getting higher and higher along the way. Whenever you get a visual on the target, mark it on the map. Or tell your comrades about your discovery with either I am attacking or someone attack the target radio commands. They are activated with T47 and T17 button combinations respectively. As a result, the location and the altitude of the enemy will be displayed on screen. Remember that your effective spotting range is determined by the awareness and keen vision skills of your crew. Don't forget to crank them up. When it comes to ground battles, spotting is a little bit more complex. There is also a special radio communication skill to consider. It increases the range at which the enemies detected by your allies are marked for you and your team. You've seen an enemy? Now all your teammates know its location. You can also land a few shots on the opponent just to make sure. It's a great tip if you're driving a light vehicle. Sometimes it is simply impossible for you to penetrate the enemy's armor. But you can always show your teammates where the opponent is hiding. If you hit an enemy vehicle, a red arrow will appear right above the opponent, and you'll see a corresponding blinking marker on the map. It's a good idea to check the bottom right screen corner every now and then to track these markers whenever they appear, especially if they light up right behind your back. Remember that enemy vehicles are also spotted in the same fashion if they're hit from a plane. No one can hide from the keen eyes in the sky. And now, it's time to talk about one of the biggest dangers that military aviators have to face on a day-to-day -day basis. Your aircraft is flying high in the skies. You're descending on your enemy in a steep dive. Now all it takes are a tight turn and a few well-placed shots. The enemy is in the palm of your hand. But suddenly, everything changes. The sky darkens, your field of vision gets narrower, and outside becomes a blur. Your hands are pulled down, your legs become heavy, and then you black out. This was a G-induced loss of consciousness, or a G-lock. Incidents like these caused fatal accidents as far back as World War I. What made it extra terrifying, though, was that the strange phenomenon was affecting people seemingly at random. A visibly fed person could fall unconscious just after one steep turn, while a person with an unimpressive physique somehow managed to do it for hours and hours. That's why the pilots combined forces with the best doctors to make sense of what was happening mid-flight. They had to find a way to endure high Gs, to stay conscious, to stay strong, and to conquer the skies. The reasons for the blackout didn't remain a mystery for very long. It turned out that the action of G-forces moves the blood away from the brain and into your legs and the abdominal region. Due to increased gravity, it's hard for your heart to pump the blood up into your upper body. As a result, the brain and the eyes are deprived of blood, which leads to darkening of vision and the loss of consciousness. Experiments show that a trained pilot can easily withstand the exposure to 4 to 5 Gs and even sustain, for a short period of time at least, up to 12 Gs. But 20 to 30 Gs will knock anybody out in just a second. Anything higher than that, or a prolonged exposure, will lead to permanent damage. 
but that's all about positive acceleration. What about negative g-forces, when the blood rushes to your brain? Minus 3 to 4 g's is enough to burst blood vessels in your eyes and brain, which can lead to blindness or permanent brain damage. G-log continues to be a problem even today, but early efforts to combat this phenomenon were undertaken in 1930s. This early research led to the invention of early variants of G-suits, or more accurately, anti-G-suits. An Australian inventor and physiologist who went by the name of Frank Cotton came up with an interesting solution. He designed a special set of gas-operated, tightly-fitting trousers that the pilots had to wear. Every time G-forces increased during flying, the sacs within the trousers automatically inflated and pressed firmly on the abdomen and legs, thus not letting the blood of the pilot be forced into his legs. Of course, such a system was a primitive one. After years of research, the bright minds of the world started to design more advanced G-suits, including full-body G-protection systems. It is worth noting that by the end of World War II, G-suits were already pretty common. With the start of the turbojet era, they became a must. You have to understand, though, that this garment is not a universal remedy. It just helps pilots sustain higher G longer without excessive physical fatigue. And even though we're constantly getting better at understanding the high G strain and compensating for it, a strong, healthy heart and overall physical fitness are still a vital requirement for anyone who wants to be a pilot of a fighter aircraft. Now let's discuss a few things you can do to maintain a steady income. We've all been there. You want to buy a new awesome tank or purchase the expert status for your crewman, only to realize that you don't have enough silver in your coffers. Let's solve this problem once and for all. And no, we're not going to talk about the joys of driving or flying premium vehicles or using a premium account. This section is for everybody. Let's start with aviation. The rules are very simple here. The better you play, the more lines you get. Destroyed a whole bunch of enemy planes or played an active part in the latest operation? Here you go, sir. The small fortune is now yours. Organized a successful bombing run that wiped out the enemy base as well as multitude of ground targets? You'll be rewarded handsomely, too. There are also a few other things to consider. If you want a stable income, don't go beyond BR 5.0. At this level, every nation has at least a few good choices for making money. The Americans have the Canon Corsair, the Germans the BF-109 G2 Trop, the USSR the LA-5FN, the British the Spitfire Mark IX, and the Japanese can fly the excellent Ki-84KO. Then comes the important part. You have to make every second count. Be active. Destroy all airborne targets that can be brought down. If there are no good targets around, work the ground. Every frag means extra cash. Life is a bit harder for those who don't like to leave the ground. There are more targets in tank battles, which means that you get less money for each separate enemy that you blow up. Don't be surprised if you get the same amount of cash for 8 frags in ground battles for 4 frags in air battles. There is an easy solution, though. Shoot down enemy planes in mixed battles. Once you lose a tank, get into a flag gun and wait for the enemy bombers to come. Every enemy aircraft that doesn't make it back to the base thanks to you will return in the guise of a sizable sum at the end of the match. The best vehicles for a business-oriented player are as follows. The Sherman Jumbo for the Americans, the Tiger H1 for the Germans, the T-34-85 for the Soviets, and finally, the FV-4202 for the British. When it comes to choosing anti-aircraft vehicles, just take whatever strikes you fancy. And the last thing, do not forget about wagers and boosters that you will sometimes obtain in the game. Use them in battle, and your earnings will go up. Good luck! Finally, it's time for the traditional last part of our show, Hotline, developers answering questions from the comments. Strictly speaking, it's not the most serious-minded section of the show. If you want answers to be given with solemn faces, feel free to appeal to the official forums. Here we'll have a more light-hearted discussion of the big questions of War Thunder. We hope you like it. 
We'll start with a question from Davidios Kutkevichis. Hello, I really hope that you'll notice my question. What about pilot models currently in-game? Are you going to update them? Hello, buddy. Sure, we'll never start working on the visuals. We'll get to the pilot models sooner or later. The second question comes from Marco Laxo. Will War Thunder get a feature where you can transfer Golden Eagles from a user or account to another user or account? This would be useful for the players who want to give some Golden Eagles to their friends. Hey, Marco! The problem is that easy gifting within game would be abused by gold sellers and will also create incentives for account hacking and card fraud. So we're not going to implement this feature unless we can find a good way of doing it. Then there's a question from a user called Stupid Flanders. Will PS4 users get to use player-made skins for tanks and planes? It's not entirely up to us, sadly. PlayStation 4 does not allow unapproved files being transferred to console because there is a risk of security breach. In the eyes of the system, War Thunder mods and custom skins are exactly this – some rogue files. We'll finish with a message from a player called Gunner Snowdale. Hello, Gaijin. You always say you read all the comments. I'd like to take time to say thanks. You have a great game, I enjoy it very much, and look forward to what you will do in the future. Thanks, mate. We know, though, that our game is yet far from perfect. There is still a lot of work to do. Thanks for support. We'll do our best. This is it for today, but feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on the shooting range.